poem by Banabam Halilu, The Dining Table, talks about a society that is ravaged with poverty. Now the poet is trying to look at a society that has been plagued with poverty and various lacks and the implication it has to people that are living in the society. Now the dining table as the name emphasizes, we all know what a dining table is, students, a table where we stay to eat. But this time, the poet is not describing a table where there is enough, where there is food. In fact, the poet is describing a table where there is nothing on it, a dining table without food and anything on it. He was trying to look at how our society has been structured in a way that a very good number of it, millions and billions of people, are living in extreme poverty. Now, due to the state of things in the society, the poet is looking at himself as a changer, a changer who has come with this idea to change things, to make things leave the status quo, the way things are being done, to a new way of doing things, like a revolution. That okay, now that everybody is suffering from poverty, he's looking at the means of bringing more sufficient things for them. But the poet could not celebrate his success story because eventually the society still remains in poverty. Now, the thematic structures in the dining table, we're going to look at some of the things that the poet was looking to talk about. But first of all, the poet is from Africa. He's an African poet. He's from Syria alone. And like we know, um, poverty has been a great issue in Africa for a very long time. So the poet was trying to look at his own society, his immediate society, which was Syria alone as a case study, to look at what and what has ravaged that society in terms of poverty. Now, he used some stuff, some words I'm going to bring out, which are symbolic. One of them is dinosaur, jackals, wolves, dogs, and locust. Now these are metaphoric representation. Dinosaurs, jackals, wolves, dogs, and locust. Now, what are these metaphors relating to? Basically, if we talk about dogs and wolves, what will come to our mind is an animal. But this time, the poet is not looking at an animal. He's looking at people who will call in this engagement bourgeoisies. Now, the bourgeoisies are those who have enough, those who drive the economy. Now, these persons, they have ravaged the society to the extent that there's nothing left for those beneath who are known as proletariat to feed from. They have driven the society to a point where they are the ones who are getting richer and richer at the expense of the poor. And these people have built a sort of tyranny, a sort of wall in themselves that they created a divide between themselves. Now we now have those who have in society and they have not. There's a big divide between them. This was what the poet was trying to look at by using these symbols we mentioned. And most of these things have driven countries into war and famine and some other things that have disturbed the country. Now this war and famine, the effect is not on those who are there at the top. The effect is usually more on those who are beneath in the society because they are the ones that get to suffer for these things that happen. Now this war that has been built by these people tends to ridicule the society. Ridicule the society because why? I started by saying that the bourgeoisies now have more at the expense of those who do not have. And it's even funny that it is those who do not have that actually work for those that have. But at the end of the day, those who have they have a lot on their table, whereas those who do not have, they ravage into poverty. So symbolically, the poet was trying to look at those who drive the economy, who make things happen in the economy at the expense of the poor, a society that is ravaged with poverty. Now let's look at some of the poetic device or language that was used in the poem. Like I started by saying, from the title of the poem alone, it's even symbolic, the dining table. He said it's a place where people stay to eat, but there's nothing to eat on this dining table. So we can actually say that the title of the poem is very appropriate and the language is simple and straight. Now, one of the literary devices that the poets use is something we call antithesis. Say, do you next to Do 
dinner tonight comes with gun wounds. Dinner tonight comes with gun wounds. Another one is oxymoron. Our dessert tongue. Vegetable blood. Now we have some symbols that was also used by the poets in the poem. Some of which include scorpions, which means death. Another one is crocodiles. Which meant death also. And then we have gone, which is symbolic to war. Now, if we look at the poem carefully, we will now come to see, like this first part, it said, Dinner tonight comes with gone's wound. We started by saying that even the title of the poem is symbolic, the dining table. Now, dinner tonight is talking about food that is eaten in the night, it comes with gone's wound. It comes to the society where they don't even get food to eat, but it's all about war and the after effects of war. Our desert tongues, like the vegetable blood, that tongue is like desert. We know what a desert is, a place where there is no water. Now their tongue has not tested food or water, but all they have with them is vegetable blood, blood from the results of war. Now I also use some symbols like scorpions, that represent death, crocodile also that represent death, and gone that is symbolic to war. So basically, what the poet was trying to look at was the society that is ravaged with poverty, extreme poverty at that, and the after effects of war. And symbolically, he called it the dining table. And this society represents the African dispensation, the African environment that is always filled with war and other, fa and other things that come along with it. Like we started by saying, we said it's an African poem and the poet is from Sierra Leone. So this brings to our end our engagements on African poetry. We've taken a long look at some poems which are written by Africans. And we have it in mind that these poets, they were trying to write basically, they were engaging themselves. Like from the introduction of our class on literature, we started by saying that literature is a mirror of the society. And we know what a mirror is when you pick a mirror. You see a representation of yourself on the mirror. So the society that these poets live in, they made a representation of it in their works. And this representation basically that we have looked at in our engagement lately was on African poetry. So this brings to our end our poems on African poetry. In our next class, we are going to start up with poems that are basically written by non-African poets. They also look at the non-African dispensation. Thanks for watching class online today. Do have a lovely day.